we've said our goodbyes, leaving Edgewater, going to the Harrington Harbour north for boat works in the yard. Not nice conditions in the Chesapeake. 15 knot wind, choppy, getting salt water over everything. We don't have the bimini up. We don't have the sails up. We're all cloudy bays naked. But the crew's not. The crew is well snugged up in our grey gear. Grey weather, grey clouds. clouds, grey trousers, grey top. What do you say? Grey. Blue water, we want blue water! Give us blue water back again! Three hours later, we are in Herring Bay, still cloudy. We have one very focused captain here. Yes, very shallow. They dredge this channel up here to seven feet and we draw eight feet. So, do the math. We're hoping there's a bit of a higher tide we're going to manage to sneak in or push the Chesapeake mud aside. Let's see. Well, we go for a hull job anyway, so... Coming out is going to be more important. We don't want to wipe all the paint off bottom. And depth is dropping. Uh, we're just coming across Herring Bay now, uh, coming uh, up towards the Federal Channel. I guess we'll be in on M.2 if we can get in with this depth. Um, Going in very slowly, 2.9 meters. Three, two nine, two seven, two five. This is the captain's face in 2.5 meters depth. And maybe we stopped. Take three of entering the channel. Two five. Two five. Two six. Two six. Two five. Two six. Looks like we might be through this time. Two seven. Interesting channel markers. It was third time lucky. We've just spotted a deer swimming. Not sure which one had the right of way, the deer or cloudy way. And we're through. Was that captain okay <laughs> thank goodness it was a very light breeze we managed to find our way through just like this much well we were touching i think even then we are nicely moored up a bit of a tight fit here we are in three meters of water let's hope it stays that way our big fenders again put to very good use just started rain again. Tied up in Harrington Harbour Marina, ready for haul out. Just waiting for the water to rise a bit. And the slips are right over there. Oh, and that speed goes boat. What's wrong? So this is the furnace which you've lifted up to try to get some grease under here. And this is the main bearing it runs on. The one on here I just see this huge great gap. So I have to ask the rigging guys tomorrow what they think about that. It shit don't look right to me. So last night I took off these hydraulic fittings so we could lift this up to lubricate. 
these were completely, completely jammed up with rust. Now they work okay. Make sure we put them back with some uh, grease. Ready for a trip up the mast? Yep. For a routine check? Yes, testing, testing. <laughs> you have all the tools? I think so. Glenn is all the way up. Commenting about the bird poo on the wind indicator. And this is our accommodation <laughs> away from Cloudy Bay. Where's your bed? This is our accommodation while Cloudy Bay is in the yard. It's mine. It's all mine. It's all mine. Where are you staying? Next morning, ready for haul out. We move from one side of the dock to the other. And we are starting to maneuver. Let's see how this goes. Not an easy job. Yeah, we're going to flip at the moment. Okay. 2.9, This is so slick. I've never seen the boat move by hand before. I just hope it's a stop. <laughs> and we're in. <laughs> But she'll be shiny when she comes out. The hull is actually not too bad. You see quite clearly where we ran aground, where Tio and Jetta ran us aground. And the dark blue paint is almost off, which is good. That means we've about ablated everything we can. And even the top stripe looks nice when it's shiny. We just need that wet look. We are very conveniently located right next to the West Marine. Cloudy is ready for the works to commence tomorrow. She didn't get much attention today. Only Glenn works now. And the Red Cutie is our hire car. The old anti-foul is flaking. So we will see tomorrow what the solution is to scrape it off. We are currently under our bed. Back to the rudder again. I think last time I pulled the rudder up ever so slightly too much. At the moment, the rudder's rubbing on the bottom of the hull very, very slightly, just enough to cause a bit of a problem. Here is where it rubbed. Into the bow thruster, I've contacted side power and they say that the brushes need to be checked. That's why it's giving this black stuff everywhere. So they say underneath this cap, which I have just managed to remove the bolts from, I should find the brushes. Ooh, it's very black in there. I guess the brushes are under there somewhere. So this is the brush which has come out of the bow thruster and we can see that it's perfectly right there's nothing wrong with 
brush. There's enough on there, so I just can't work out why it's throwing out so much greasy dust. Dust, I can understand, but greasy? Where does grease come from? So, brushes look good. We are going for just a general clean of all this black, of which we have got lots of black soot off. It's now looking, not perfect, but a lot better. Reassembling, it's a bit trickier. As usual, it's always a problem. Without sucking that rubber down the back. Uh -huh. That's easier. That's good. Second day in the yard. Work started. On the outside, on the inside, we started three days ago. Close up. Drying off. We are filling our gas bottles. Ready for cooking. We contemplate on applying Ceramic Pro on the hull of the boat and we came to see this boat uh, which has previously had Ceramic Pro applied to the hull. I've washed it now. <laughs> Looks pretty good. The recreational job for the evening is getting off the propeller for servicing. Or trying to. These things never come off easily. So coated in rubbish. This will need serious cleaning. Who, me? <laughs> you too, maybe. Oh, yeah, I need serious cleaning. And two, probably. Anodes are off. It's my favourite little device the rope cutter, which usually ends up cutting me more than it cuts rope. Day three in the yard, propeller part two. After a night soaking in the lice. WD-40 bar. This has come off quite easily and the propeller should, in theory, go. Come off. Hey! One propeller off. That was easy. Or well, looked easy. Now we have to get this monster off. Little pin out. Let's take these little babies out here. This is, and out come the blades. Blade one, each one is numbered. For this hub nut here, we need a special tool 36 millimeter socket, which we do not have. We ordered some online and hopefully they will be delivered early next week. Then we finish the propeller. Day three, mid-afternoon. We actually have hired help working. That's good for a change. Oh, you know it's not for white. For the white color. Yeah, you got these rubbers. Now that I look at them, they're still there at least. But they are. I think we'll replace them. The problem is, he's trying to get them out the bloody holes. There we go. Actually, that's not too bad. We can. No, it's not. We can hold those for backups, uh, emergency <laughs> backups. Yeah. Previous ones would have been completely shot. You see where they've gone before, and then we actually damaged the metal. I love chemicals. Let's see if it fizzes. Disappointment. We have help to lower the dinghy. Okay. Okay. And the dinghy is off. What do you want to set? I think just me and Ray out of the way of everybody. Yeah, brilliant.
gland polishes off the result of my chemical work, which lovely. is pretty good. Look at that shine. I think it's only you need rubber gloves. Beautiful. Glove. I only need rubber gloves on because every time my fingers touch it now I'm putting moisture back on it. This is the clean part of the cardboard and indeed a few hours later the propeller is spotless. We're gonna have Very a shiny. We're going to have a dry run. New rubber stops. Look at this. Beautiful. Engineering wonders. For the evening job, we are tightening the stern gland here. We've been getting a fair bit of water through there, and they told me I just have to move it up a centimetre, which surprisingly I actually managed to do. I thought it would be uh, very difficult. So that's tighter against this piece now. Oh, it's very tight. So it should stop water coming out so much. Hopefully. Day four in the yard. Bow thruster propellers come off. It's pretty much a year ago since we did this, does it? No, what size do I need? 24 millimeter. No sign of hired help yet. Maybe later. It's Saturday today. This prop just looks like new. Look at that. We are in love. Beautiful. New gas bottles installed last evening. Well, in the middle of the night. They are perfect. Look at them. They're actually touching there. I mean, you couldn't get closer. Oh, yeah, perfect fit indeed. They nice. look nice. Nice, sir. This is the other end of the valve yeah. Oh, look at that. I guess Glenn misses his working days. Isn't he cute? Sexy. Looks like it will be another cleaning day. Hull is getting prepared for polishing and compounding. For ones that are really stained well, they really and the gel coat repair like on the bow, almost yeah, finished. And on this other side, we are in trouble. So this is what we're tackling with the hull. The coat underneath has released itself, presumably because of the fresh water, the brackish water. Sanding didn't work, so now we have two options. Either the very expensive sandblasting here, or leave it as such and go to Antigua and chemical strip off of the anti-fouling there, which will be cheaper. That means haul out again. I'm not happy. Concoction to paint the bow. It's called yeah, Sardosa Wing. It's coming across the Atlantic. It's causing a nightmare. Bow thruster propellers, nice and clean. Me, nice and dirty. <laughs> Not too bad. Oxy paint on the bow thruster blades. Keel damage time. Well, we, have, we and predecessors have hit a few corals. We're going to glass it up. So first of all, the paint's going to come off down to the down to the resin, and then we'll put some more glass on. Couple of hours later, almost finished.
So we've got the bottom coat off, or the bottom paint. That's down to the uh, epoxy primer. So I'm just going to get the last few bits of this bottom paint off with wet and dry. Let's see how this goes. Rather had the same treatment. MTS Electronics on board to check the VHF and the SSB antennas. Sounds like we are going to change the SSB cable. I need a metal vise. This is going to be the clamp to go on the uh, backstay. Unfortunately, this isn't, this isn't uh, the right diameter, so I'm grinding it out. But it's getting very hot. Like bloody hot. Wind it by another millimeter and a half. Does it fit? We have the new cable. It's all nice and shiny now. We're going up the mast on a very special mission. Bird avoidance. They are pooping everywhere. I'm going to try and do something on the top of the mast to stop them landing on it or get a shotgun. This bird poo is what we need to put up with. Look at the decks everywhere. Purple poo. Day seven in the yard. Not much physical work this morning. We are just picking up canvas from repair, cockpit tent and sail bag. Successful repair. And it's going to be a little bit of driving to pick up deliveries from Edgewater. And the halyard splicing. This is the splice look. Very nice. The purple thing is my finger. <laughs> splice is actually there. Very nice. And it's for the bow prop. Oh, and a receipt for the finance person. Sockets have arrived. That one fits. And this one fits. Cool. Okay, that's the prop puller, which we've just engaged. And that's the hub off. Okay, the moment of truth. Will the cutlass come out? Easily. Let's let me going in. Oh yes. The little tool we had designed last year. It's pushing it. Might even come out with a hammer, but I hate to hammer things when I... so, yeah. Our trusty help for today, Ray, helped Sandy. us earlier with the epoxy you, and you, now with the cutlass you, bearing. You've heard that term, don't touch it with a barge pole. That's what he's doing, look. <laughs> Driving. Maybe take this off before it falls off and hurts somebody. 600 hours of motoring. Yep. Now the question is, it's probably going to be good, not a Chinese knockoff. New one. A bit of archaic technique to get the new one in. Archaic? There's nothing wrong with Flintstone technique every now and again. <laughs> Until it doesn't work, then you call the experts. Technique number two, slightly upgraded. You push the rest by hand? <laughs> <laughs> I rode the wrong pair of uh, cake today for that. Small campfire to keep us warm for the evening. 
drawing the epoxy. Glenn continues to be very entertained. Cleaning mechanical bits. I love mechanical bits. That's Look. the rope cutter. Ifing and ahhing, they're just mechanical. Day eight in the yard. Propeller is back on. Cutter halyard is back on. Tightening the shackle on the fur legs. We were trying to anchor, but it's a bit rocky here. Yeah, it's too rocky. detailing doing a great job on the blue stripe it comes up beautifully it is coming up nicely I'm quite happy I don't think he'll get a driving license for this one. <laughs> that is very shiny. There's a great thing inside this bearing here. And on the cutter. I love surfing these units. They're so nice and shiny. It's of engineering. Nice and shiny. New anodes for the bow thruster. Let's hope these ones don't fall out. Day nine in the yard, and that's the sound of beautiful polishing. Bang time again. Try to get these bolts here secure. Might have to re-drill them. I'll be done with it as soon as I take these off. Genius in action. Mm. Trying to think what to do. I need some M12 bolts like this. Let's go search. Dry run for the job. New delivery. Ooh, Speakers. Yeah, quite nice. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Glenn is still under the boat with more paint and epoxy. Gal is repaired. looks very good here was the worst part the worst part is just a bit of it looks really good now 
and polishing still in progress, but looking really good. Where are you going? Hi, Oxenopolis. <laughs> he loves playing with the lift. Well, enough of Glenn. The hull looks amazing. The shine is just perfect. What? Apparently he takes me shopping. But look I'm at him. Shopping. Look at no, him. No, I'm taking you shopping because I can't touch anything in the shop because I'm too dirty. <laughs> this is the fun part. All the hard work's done and this is the fun part. A bit of a tight fit under there. I, I've been fitted under there. Yeah, I can vouch it's a tight fit. Yard day number nine and bank plate number take two. Second coat of epoxy primer is on. In theory, all the dirty jobs should be finished. And we have riggers on board to do a rig inspection. Gory parts, rubbers, 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 anodes, screws. I shall have to update my inventory. Well, there's the nut look. That's what it should look like. Ooh. And we are also updating hardware on the new spare DJI drone. Short break from our chores. Test the new drone. To get a spacer here just to lock this up a little bit so while we've got the vang off we have it held here the weight and to stop it going forward we've tied it to the back stay with a dinghy lift so now there's a little weight on here because i've got to take this out and move it up so i don't want the boom flying off over, over the place I think this washer I've got here will do the gap just fine. Yeah. We tighten this half a turn and we will put a longer pin in it. the usual polishing. Can't put anything back unless it's shiny. One would have some for breakfast otherwise. Ow! Shit. Voila! Very shiny. Job done. Greasing it seemed a good idea at the time. Looks not to be. Yeah, it should have been done. Back together nice and shiny. Look at that! It must be really cold and rainy. He's <laughs> all waterproof. Dawn, have Dawn, can clean Furlex top swivels while it's raining. 
Good luck. Oh, it's so cold. Close the hatch. Bye. Are you nice and wet? I'm, well, I wouldn't say nice and wet. I'm wet. The bird is de pooped and de greased. Oh. Dedication. Electrician hat on. Yep. We are Thank installing you. new speakers. Washing hat to electrician's hat. Which comes with dismantling the radio. I think it's easy. I'm trying to find out which wires are positive and which wires are negative for the speaker. And we have music. Day 10 in the yard, indoors, it's pouring with rain and we are in the engine room. This is the fitting that feeds raw water down to the stern gland to make sure it's always got water in. First of all, this broke off as I tried to remove it. And secondly, look at the calcium in here. It is completely stuffed. So I think we need to do a rid line clean. Big one. We couldn't find the exact replacement for the valve. Whoop, we've got a near enough one. And this lovely gunky stuff, which we told seals anything. And we're now gonna put it back on once it came. Try and get the thread started. So I can never get thread started when the camera's on me. There we go. Okay, there you go, this pipe comes into here like this, and we are done, in fact I might just cut that a bit shorter, off, on, cool. Sacred cave, coming undone. So that's where this little valve goes to, goes through here into the top of the stone gland so always make sure that there's water in there and it doesn't get air if you have this against this with air friction it will be uh, soon burn out so it just keeps it lubricated we have a leak under the water heater it's just a silly little leak i should have just left the damn thing lots of hassle Pipes reconnecting. This is the old pipe off the top of the bilge pump. Looks right from the outside. It's going very thin there because all the metal inside is completely corroded. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a new one of those. So we are going for this model. Not quite as glamorous, but it'll do the job. Jobs in the engine room today. Number one, new valve on here. The stone gland. Number two, serviced all the through hole fitting for the generator. Number three, put a new hose for the outlet for the bilge pump. And number four, which you definitely won't be able to see, but I'll poke it there anyway. Is new valves, or rather clean valves, underneath the hot water tank. And that was my day. Cuts and scrapes and frustrations in my little room. Being watched by the one and only Wana, the miss. What you doing? Day 11, back to down and dirty jobs. Just realised that we need to get all this covered properly in the right stuff with anti foul. So then when we get to Antigua, we can shock here and it's done. Otherwise, we'll never get it, never get to it again. And it should just be those patches left to do. So, yeah, it's back to sanding. Glenn's cooking workshop. 
Yeah, mixing the paint. This is the Interprotect, which we're going to try to get three coats on. Told you he's cooking. With my mixing spoons, three of these. I think it's pretty good at coloring. Two coats of Interprotect done on the kill and on Glenn's hands. Oh, I gloves. And on the rudder. And in the afternoon, up on the deck. I've been having a few problems with these things. And the guys told me these are a thousand dollars to replace. So I should look after them. So I'm actually putting in a little bit of grease. Of course, the whole thing's stainless steel, except for these tiny little ball bearings in here. What a steel, can you believe? How stupid is that? Day 12 in the yard, 7.30. The sun is just coming up, shedding lovely light on these trees. Hopefully we day, today we finish the polishing. We have quite a bit of taping up here. Ready for polishing the cockpit. And here is the taping champion. This is artwork, this is it? It is. Artwork. When we told Karen that we wanted the blue stripe on the top of the boat done, she thought we just meant that little bit around the cockpit. What I actually meant was everything in between all these blue stripes. Slight miscommunication. This is going to be our new color for the anti-fouling slightly darker than anticipated but it will have to do masking up ready for our prop speed day 13 activities in full swing this is really shiny red sky team in a compounding marathon they've been working around the clock and it's coming out really, really nice. We are very happy. I think we've had quite enough of coming down that step ladder. Yeah, Wouldn't you say, Captain? Captain, let's get dirty. Let's get dirty again. This cover is doing me well. I've got more dirty on the boat than I ever did at work. We are going to paint the propeller. Yes. Hitting up the propeller. This is a critical job apparently. It's going to be perfect. Of course, look, lobby blobby. against time we are at six minutes already no pressure second coat comes on the clear coat comes on it should be the last step it's very colorful under blue water it is now quite glossy oh i'm looking forward to varnishing the gunnel now i do enjoy varnishing gel coat here really looks like new we feel like we have a brand new boat. Captain is happy. Not quite as shiny as Karen's top sides, but still not bad. Should keep the barnies off. Anodes are on. It's run, this is done. It's to be sealed before it goes to Antigua, so nobody can touch it. Day 14. Cockpit coming out nicely. Hopefully, we'll remove the tape today. Second coat of Bravo is on. Look at that shine. 
and the reflection we get. Very nice. Mind the fingers! It's right, I've got ten of them. Now we've got our expensive bottle of Freon and making chocks for it to be in the uh, hold. So when we're rolling around, it's not going to roll everywhere. It's going to stay in one place, hopefully. I got these nice big chunks of teak from an unnamed yard. This is what we are trying to do. <sighs> Bloody heavy. It's a heavy little can, that's for sure. Glenn went for a beautification process. G.I. Joe, at your service. Yes, you sir. me? <laughs> Back in the engine room. So I started to get a little bit worried about some fittings that are showing like pink later on here. Some of these brass fittings, and it's called desincification. Once the zinc gets leached out of the metal, they become very weak. And this is what happens. I just tried to take it off and it just fell off. So I think we're going to have to go through a lot of our brass fittings here and uh, decide which ones we replace. Because if that falls off we're in the water, glug, 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 glug. We don't want glug, glug, do we? Yeah. No, it's salty. Especially when we're not on board. It came from the water maker. Yeah, damn water maker. I knew it was going to bite me in the ass sometime. Day 15, slightly tidier in here. I think we'll go in the water today. This side is finished. We love the gloss. Ceramic Pro is finished. Looks very nice. Masking tape off. Looking forward to wash the boat. And looking forward to get back in the water. Red Sky here finished the job. Tools are all packed. And we are very happy with the job. Travel lift is here. We are ready to make a splash.
We're in. First job, cleaning the decks. No more bird poo. That's exactly what we needed. The flag up. Titi, you were on board. When the Queen's on board, you're gonna have the flag. You are on board. Up the rig inspection in progress. And down here, cockpit cleaning in progress. First of November, and after being in thermals for the last couple of weeks, now Glenn is stripped off and washing the decks. It's wonderful, summer has returned. Look what comes off the decks, yuck. How is the captain feeling about washing the boat at long last? Oh, love it, love it, love it. Oh, look at that. Clean decks, clean windows. Clean captain. Clean captain, clean cockpit. Oh, spotless, in fact. Beautiful. It will be raining soon. So we have an extra room on the boat, our very own patio, just before sunset. That's the boat Ray is working on. And this is the boat we have been working on. Up the mast he goes again put the windex and to remove the tie wraps which didn't scare the birds at all on with the diaper or nappy depending on what you call them he is quite busy up there Cutting the tie wraps off. What a waste of tie wraps. Birds have flattened them all. Chocks are in place holding our refrigerant tank in place. We can now roll and it better not do. Thank you, Ray, for some nice big chunky pieces of wood. Brilliant. It's not only boats that things break on, we have a flat tire. More haste, less speed. Rushing around, hit a curb, and a flatty. We've been shopping for the last four hours. This is the result. Captain here is... I'm keeping out the way of all the packing. Second day of provisioning, we finish shopping after 10 p.m. We have Christmas tree, Christmas lamp, lampshade. And while I pack away, Glenn here has discovered the leak. We found the leak, we found the leak. It's coming from some damn valve underneath the hot water tank. Not very much, drip, 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 drip. There seems to be enough to Set off the dodge pump every now and again. Surprisingly. At least it's fresh water, not salt water. We aimed for, a, for an early night. Yes. It's nearly 1 a.m. again. So we left our dripping pipe last night into a tray, which is now almost full of water. It's amazing how drips add up. And our bilge is completely empty. So that, finally, 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 is where our damn leak into the bilge is coming from. We have found it. Now I've got to fix it. Less wind this morning. We tried to put the Genoa up. Monster indeed. New telltale zone. It's flying already.
around the shopping almost put away and while I'm busy with that Glenn is checking the weather forecast for the week as of now looks like we will be living in two days complicated business going out into the Atlantic uh oh so under the water tank here like all hot water tanks we had a pressure relief valve that is leaking so that either means there's too much pressure or uh, the valve needs changing so to check it, I have put a gauge on the end here to make sure that it's not going over four bar. And we can also look at the gauge on the expansion tank at the top. And that's not going over four bar either. So it seems like the pressure's not there. So it must be the pressure relief valve is just faulty. Which is, in theory, easy just to change it. It's something you buy from a hardware store. but in practical terms getting underneath there and undoing the something that's been done up for 10 years is not going to be fun probably better to take the whole damn water tank out and do it so we don't break anything and that's not going to be fun either especially when we want to leave tomorrow so i think i'm just going to leave this blocked until we get to antigua and today we have rain and unfortunately we have missions as well, so I've got to go. We are now abusing the services and facilities of this mega vice in Ray's workshop while he sets up his spray. Oh, what I would do for a spray room like this on Cloudy. Look at that. Flood lit, no dust. Heated. Wonderful. We have a very sophisticated technological process here under the umbrella. This is the under the umbrella, umbrella operation cleaning up glass fittings. Back in the engine room trying to put it all back together. Gotta look good aesthetically. Can't have shiny brass on top of scratch black, can we? And just to show the end result of the endeavors in the engine room, the safety valve on the end of the safety valve, just to make sure there's not a problem there. And then over here, we have the nice shiny new valves on the manifold, the water maker, air conditioner, and deck wash. The view of the engine room actually looking nice and clean and tidy at the moment last day in the marina and we need to do laundry autumn is here half the trees have lost their leaves modeling my new west marine boots the tide is high enough now we are ready to leave in a few minutes Lines are off. We are leaving Harrington Harbour North. Bye bye, nice yard. And most importantly, bye bye, Ray. Bye bye, Harrington. Bye bye, Ray. So sorry we didn't say goodbye properly. We're calling you in a minute. And into the tricky channel because of which we were in such a hurry to leave. And next destination is... Oh, wait! Harrington Harbour North again! Just kidding, Ray! We're coming back to say goodbye! All here! We have enough water, so we can wait a little bit. Leaving Harrington Harbour north take two this time with audience bye ray thanks for everything bye cloudy bay see you. see you soon in the caribbean right see you in the caribbean yeah wish us luck going across uh, lots of luck safe passage yeah.
Take two. Bye bye Harrington. Bye bye Ray. Properly this time. <laughs> After the dress rehearsal. <laughs> now we can live with a smile. Out of the channel. Two meters of water. Deep last time, or they dredged it like eight inches this much under. We had a very concerned captain there for a moment. Once I'm out of this harbour, I'll be happier. We didn't go far, only a mile away from the marina, maybe not even that. And look at this sunset. Beautiful light. And the rainbow behind the fishing rod.